you think 2020 was bad. What's coming is gonna be far worse. Greetings and salutations. I'm Gil. And I'm Gil, and this is Strategic Prepper. All right, here we are again. A couple of weeks ago, we talked to you about uh, 2020, looking backwards at the problems, some of the things that went well, some of the things that uh, uh, that didn't uh, go so well. We looked at opportunities for improvement. Today, we're going to look forward. We're going to look at the rest of 21. We're going to look at 22 and maybe beyond. So we're going to be looking at the risks that we see. We've done a lot of our own intelligence gathering. We've looked at numerous uh, sources. So we're going to talk about what we see as the upcoming risks that are prominent and what we can do as preppers to mitigate or to lessen those. All right, so I'd like to talk about the near term. What is uh, um, right in front of us, the type of risks to preppers, to our, our safety, to our security? Well, and yes, we are gonna to refer to our notes, by the way. So, uh, no comments on that. Not go ahead with comments. Uh, Heck, it's my shortage is for one. I mean, that's near term, ongoing, and was last year. That's right. Uh, it's hard to get stuff. You, you know, that's that's amazing. I uh, I'm always surprised at what's next for a shortage. It was what a month ago when you went and you couldn't get canning lids in a lot of places. Yeah, I mean, you got everything from canning lids. Like, I mean, you get you get. You know, uh, automakers are, are shutting down production because they can't make vehicles. There's a shortage of vehicles. Um, they're wood. Talking, what if you're trying to build? Yeah, wood. Wood the, is the is, cost of uh, the price of uh, building has gone up. You know, I got a, I got a guy I work with. Uh, he priced out a barn, and it's cheaper for him to build out of steel than it is out of wood. They're talking about a fuel shortage because they can't get truck drivers. Um, there's no uh, a worker shortage. You know, no one wants to work right now. That's a big issue too. So, Everything that I'm reading, just about everything, says it's going to get better before, or it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, things are going to things are going to compound. Um, one problem is going to make another problem worse, right? So you get these major conglomerates of announce, hey, our prices are going up 10% across the board, and you get people not wanting to work. Um, yeah, the shortage probably isn't going to get any better. Yeah, just as an example. I ordered a uh, new iPhone, and uh, it was the 11, not the 12. You'd think that they would have them in stock. It's been out for a while, right? It's been out for a while, and they originally told me uh, two weeks. So, okay, I, I can wait two weeks. I'm, I'm using a, a six. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, Fred Flintstone's old one. But uh, So they told me two weeks, then I got uh, a, a, uh, an email back. That says uh, no, it's going to be uh, uh, into July. It's April, by the way. It's going to be into July. I won't get it until July. No, it's no. not the new model. It's the old model. And, but it's like that with everything. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, what do we do as preppers? Well, step one is to take an assessment of what you have, right? And this part of this part is going to be covered in the video, right? All these threat assessments. But what do I have? What am I going to need? Right, and then you end up with a list of what I don't have. Okay, then you're gonna rank those based off of what's most important. Also, how much does it cost? So this was, and this this could take various forms. So, so do you also consider its current availability or lack of availability? Yes, and, and projected. So, for example, one of, and this will be there'll be other videos that'll get into this in depth also. But vehicles, right? So part of my long-term plan is hey. I got a particular vehicle I want to get, uh, right? So I've always wanted to get a foreigner. A few different reasons for that, but one of them also being that the long-term reliability. This is like end of last year, and I'm starting to look, and vehicle shortage is already happening. So I'm looking, you know what? I'm in a good place. I could buy one. I wasn't really planning on doing it for like five or six more years, but it didn't look like the shortage was going to get any better. So, for example, the the the, the dealership locally, mm -hmm. there's no brand new foreigners. And Amazing. people are selling used ones um, for more than they bought them for three, four, five years ago. 
Um, and so for me, thankfully, I got one in November. So decisions to that, you know, whether it's real estate, real, right now, real estate prices are high. They're probably not going to stay high. Um, but yeah, like canning, if, if you've been trying to get canning lids, and let's say your store now has them, and they didn't, and this has been on your list, and you just kind of push it off. Hey, you know what? Even if you're not going to do it, that, maybe you should buy them. That's exactly the boat I was in. It wasn't on my list of things to buy in the near term, um, but I heard there was a shortage, so I started checking different stores, and uh, the first three or four that I checked were out of everything. Uh, I ordered some reusable canning lids that I saw demonstrated on a different YouTube channel, and they were back ordered. That place had to add uh, staff and uh, something that should have been a stock item. Uh, I got like a month and a half later. Uh, but I did find some canning supplies, and I bought, let's just say, a bunch. But because they came available, and uh, I recognized that, that there's a shortage. So yeah, sometimes you got to look, and you have to you have to be flexible enough on your plan. First, you have to have a plan, but you have to be flexible enough so that you can make changes. Because if you don't have a plan, let's say you aren't you've got no plans to do any canning it's not in your agenda uh, then why would you rush out and buy canning supplies yeah don't get it just because everyone else in the facebook group is getting it you know you see that too oh i should get xyz and don't get it just yeah. because there was a shortage and you know yeah now and now you found some you found some nine millimeter ammo <clears throat> but you don't want a nine millimeter you know, I, of course, I, I you, don't. You, you could always go back and resell it. Yeah, for oh, that, yeah. for you could make it's money. Gonna bar, it's going to be a barter. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to barter right now, man. You could, you could, You're not going to barter 9 millimeter. People, people, everyone's got it. People make money now doing that. But, well, but also, too, is you end up with this running list in your head. So let's say you say, hey, I need more. I keep mine on my iPhone, my running list. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I probably should. But, um, for example, this was a few months ago. Uh, Costco had a deal on rice. What the price? A couple hundred pounds of rice. You know, and I went out, got some buckets, a mile out back, right through the hole. Yep. So, because that's another thing, too. Um, and you'll see as we talk about these different topics, one thing that should always be on your mind is food. Um, think about the totality, the totality, totality of human history, right? Food has usually been. Um, something that wasn't in abundance, right? Maybe not always scarce, but it's not like you could just waste food. And I've been, what do you think of the last 100 years, 150 years? It's been an anomaly in human history where we can get whatever we want, whenever we want, and throw away as much as we want. That's probably not going to last. Well, actually, I could say within my own lifetime, when I was younger, everyone had a garden. One of the few memories I have of my grandfather. Uh, with all of us young'uns going out picking weeds in his garden. Everyone had one. Neighbor uh, moved in. Guess what? Um, everyone gets in and picks rock at, rocks out of the dirt so he can have a garden. And a lot of people don't grow their own fruits and vegetables anymore. But it, when I was a kid in the 60s and 70s, uh, it was still pretty common. I would say within two generations it has really faded. They just people just go to Piggly Wiggly or yeah, whatever. Nobody and, and and we saw a resurgence of that with COVID, which also created disorders. But before COVID, no one had a garden really. Most of the country. Yeah. All right. Also in the near term, and this is one that should always be on our mind, especially if you live in an urban or a near urban area, um, and that is civil unrest. Um, and I'm going to mention this a, a little bit. Uh, we've got a couple of items that are kind of tied together. Um, and the last item actually is what I think is where it all comes together. And we're going to, uh, if you stay tuned, we're going to hit that yeah. at the end. That's, that's, uh, it's, it's kind it, of the perfect storm of what oh, we're talking see, about. Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to put it all together. And you're going to want to hear that because if you're not prepared, <laughs> a lot of your um, preps are going to just, uh, uh, you're going to be undone. So... Uh, you do want to uh, stick with it, but uh, civil unrest. Yeah. The key thing. I mean, everyone's talking about this, so we don't have to get too much detail. But it's not going away. 
we see that it's a tool of politicians. My personal opinion is that uh, the civil unrest gets stoked because if us citizens are at each other's throats or at least uh, putting each other at risk, then we can't watch them and we can't keep an eye on them. And that sounds like a big old conspiracy theory. Uh, but you know what? If you watch these people, um, what, what did that uh, uh, Rahm Emanuel say? Um, don't let any good crisis go to waste. Oh, and First they create the crisis and then they create the solution that always has the same result of taking our liberty away and making people, uh, not me, I'm not going to, making people more dependent on the government. Um, so civil unrest, I think a lot of it is fabricated. Yeah, no, we really saw this in 2020. Yes, there's you know. upset people. Um, there, there's, there is, there, there's injustice out there. I'm not going to say there's not, but uh, uh, the level of civil unrest um, is, is totally unnecessary. Uh, but that's something that we need to keep an eye on. Um, how do we, how do we protect ourselves? So that, and that, that's a whole strat, strategic. That's a whole thing in and of itself. But you start small, right? So step one personal defense, right? So we talked about having a pistol, understanding how to use it, or having the appropriate gear for that, holster, and you get basic training, right? And then, but your end goal really is going to have to look, you're going to have multiple people with rifles and, and stuff like that, and training with each other, a team, you know, small unit stuff. And so, so, but let's think about more for the newer, the newer prepper. I should right now? And, and I, I, I would say pay attention to the news. Yeah. Pay attention to the hot spots. Yeah, avoid them. Have alternate plans. The time to come up with an alternate plan is not when the crisis happens. The time to have alternate plans is when you've got the time to think it through and you can have contingency upon contingency. And you know what? Practice this. I remember one of the things uh, I took this course uh, when I was in the Marines, counterterrorism for Marines. And one of the things they talked about, and I'm not calling our citizens terrorists. Some of you may, some of you may not. I'm not. Um, but one of the things they talked about to uh, keep yourself safe, to, to lessen the chance of, of a terrorist attack against you, or basically a personal attack on you, is you vary your routes home or you vary your routes yeah. from one place to the other. Practice that on your way to and from work. Come up with different routes. That way, if you need an alternate route, you, you've already been on that route. You know what to expect. It's no big deal. I mean, I do that just to avoid... Um, Two extra cars at a stop sign. Oh, there's a, there's a couple of cars up there. Let me go take this other way. Practice several different uh, uh, ways. Um, understand your area. I think intelligence. Is, so it's something the most novice of preppers can can implement right away. Is is having multiple routes, having a plan on getting from point A to point B. Whether it's the market, whether it's a relative's house, whether it's to and from work. Paying attention to those, you have the plan. You're protecting yourself by avoiding the problems. I mean, it, you remember uh, they were shutting down freeways uh, well, last year. And even that, well, even with that. I have another way to go around? My wife and I, because there were things planned and all in the area. So, yeah, my wife and I went over alternate routes. and, and Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's near term. And if that's not bad enough, we have other things that we see, other indicators um, that do tell us that uh, um, that there's other things coming down the road. So stick with us. Um, make sure that you subscribe. Click the like button. Actually, I think I got the backwards. Click the like button and subscribe. And uh, but stick with us. We got a couple of more things that uh, we see coming. And by the way, if you remember other videos, uh, yes, we did correctly predict COVID uh, months before anyone else because we focus a lot, both of us on our intelligence gathering. No, we're not some CIA, although that'd be really cool, we're not. But this is information that's out there and we have practiced for a long time finding the information and gleaning political BS from what the real deal is. That's yeah. one of the things, we. that's how we protect ourselves is, is first to understand what's happening. So, the next thing beyond the near term, um, what I see is a general trajectory and in fact, a lot of you see this general trajectory, which is why you're prepping. And that is um, civil dis uh, disintegration 
deteriorating cities in particular, um, but but civil discourse, civ civil interaction, um, and along with that, government overreach. I mean, every time something seems to go downhill a little bit, government seems to be there to save the day and to take away liberties to make things better. And uh, when was the last time government overreach has made things better? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Not that I remember. Yeah, and I mean, half the time it causes these these events that we're talking about. I mean, just think about the 2020, right? People forget pretty quickly, but um, yeah, if you live in the city or the suburb, um, really your goal, uh, depending on the suburb, may not be as crucial, but really your goal should be to move out, right? Move further out, a little more rural, but... Just note, today I put a deposit on my prepping paradise piece of land. So yeah. we'll see, I might be doing that. We talk about having a plan and extent, building yeah. piece by piece by piece. I've been waiting for this land, and uh, if they accept my offer, this old boy's going in the woods. Shoot, I'm, I'm hoping, that's part of my plan too, is I'm in the suburbs and trying to move and get to somewhere, that's kind of the next level. But yeah, especially if you're in the city, if you're in the city, it's not a ghost, you have to get out. You have to. Um, if you're serious about this, you have to do it. Um, you think about the 2020, um, major cities, when just, things go bad, just, just, just that's a, the just, worst place yeah, to be. Just a note on that. There are some preppers, and, and uh, 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 God bless them, they're, they're, they, they Shoot, focus yeah. on the uh, urban environment, and they, and they really try to help people in the urban and the suburban environments. But let's be realistic. If you have a long-term SHTF, what the heck are you going to drink for water? You know, I mean, really. Yeah, where are you going to go? It, are you going to go suck water out of the drainage ditch? Are you going to put rain barrels on the roof of your uh, apartment complex? Yeah, you and everybody else. Yes. You know, you and the tens of millions of people that live in that city, you know. I and mean, the government projections are if there's a total grid down that we're going to lose uh, up to 90% of the population. Okay, most of that's going to be in the urban areas, suburban areas. If you uh, uh, follow biblical prophecies like I do, of the entire globe, uh, they talk about half the world's population dying. Uh, where's that going to be? A lot of that, the bulk of that's going to be in the cities. Yeah, people in your urban areas aren't going to be affected that much. You, you got to get out while you can. Yeah. Um, but you just say that's just a general tent trend. I mean, it's. It's really societal decay, right? You, you, we can see this happening, and, and there's polls that show this. You talk to your friends, you, you know, if you pay attention, people can see it happen. The social fabric of the country's disintegrating. For right, wrong, or indifferent, we could argue about the reason, but it is happening. And or it's going to could, contribute to some of these other issues that we're talking about, too. Or we could argue, argue it's just the normal course of, of a great nation. Yep. I mean, there have been studies on this, and uh, in fact, I'm reading a couple of books right now. Um, that, that go over the normal life cycle of empires. And it could be that it's basically unavoidable because it's normal. Yeah, you want to go down a rabbit hole, start start looking at historians who analyze the rise and fall of great civilizations and the similarities are striking. And but, it's fairly consistent. But does it matter? No, it's happening. No, it's, it's, it's happening. happening. It's it happening. doesn't matter. You know, There's um, nothing that I'm going to do that's going to change the direction change the uh, trajectory it's yeah I, i'm not going to do it so i just need to i could panic i could freak out i could cry i could be sad or i could look and say this is a risk let me come up with a plan and a thoughtful response so that you know i'm going to be in the best position uh when things do fall apart yeah and you'll notice a lot of these solutions right is not um necessarily focused on how am i going to stand and fight a lot of it how do you get to remove yourself before this happens right so You'll notice a lot of the solutions kind of tend to be very similar, okay? Um, one of them being getting a little more rural, getting more land, and being more self-sufficient, right? So if I don't have to live in an urban area, then I'm not going to. And you might look and say, hey, Gil, there's no way. I can't. I cannot move right now. That's fine. Um, but if you sat down and really thought about it, you could probably come up with a one, two, five-year plan, whatever your timeline is to get out. But it, you got to really ask yourself how serious you are about about this i mean you gotta really you know and if you're not I mean, that's, that's that's fine right but if you are um that has to be part of your plan yeah there's a movie i think it's called prepper and it's almost comical this movie 
But in the end, this is a suburban guy. I think he's a school teacher, and his wife's a school teacher. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, the end of the, they basically show preppers to be nutty, and uh, uh, it, it, that's why I think it's kind of comical. But their end is that they live in their suburban community, and they all just band together, and it's kumbaya, and they're all gonna, and, and that's that's the end. Yeah, we're winning. Uh, yeah, give them a month. Yeah, think well. Even think about your neighbors you got now. Well, you know, a lot of us have good neighbors, but a lot of people don't, right? So there's a lot of you guys out there that are thinking about this and shaking their head because you you already don't like your neighbors, you know. I like so, my neighbors. Yeah, actually, I like my neighbors too. But you know, if there's no food, they won't think people fight over each other for toilet paper. Um, if there's no food at Walmart, and there hasn't been for two weeks, you know, it's, you can imagine how. That's what yeah, and, and you've got food, and your and your friendly neighbor that you like yeah, does not right. have food. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's going to be some uh, uh, there's going to be some change relationships. So. All right, so I do want to move on to what I think is the biggest upcoming threat. I'm not going to put a date on it. I was watching uh, somebody uh, who's got a pretty solid reputation um, put a date on this, and that was by. Uh, What's the date? There's going to be a date. Somebody on YouTube who put a date on this, and he said that by early next year, this was going to hit. And actually, I've heard a number of uh, top leaders in government in these think tanks also come up with that same target. Maybe that's where this YouTube guy got it from. And that is uh, hyperinflation. And economic distress. Yeah, I've heard a number of people early 22. I'm not going to do that. I don't know. But you know what? You can't spend like a drunken sailor. No offense to drunken sailors, but you can't you can't spend like a drunken sailor and not have consequences. Yeah. And I listen to these people. Uh, you got these professors at, at Harvard. Oh my gosh, they think they're so smart. They're from Harvard. Harvard. Harvard? They think they're from Harvard. And that's probably horrible. But anyway, it's a real, yeah. and, and they come up with this crap called modern monetary theory. And AOC, she was asked about uh, um, minimum wage and, oh, $15 is the absolute minimum. That's that's the down payment. It should be $22 an hour. Where are you going to get the money? Uh, that's a stupid question. We'll just print it. That's MMT, modern monetary theory. That the government's control the money. Government can just print what it wants. That's insane. That's been tried before. It doesn't work. It never works. It can't work. It, it just goes against all the most basic laws of economics. Um, you just can't come up with new laws of economics. But these yahoos in the government, these yahoos in Harvard, they think they're so dang smart that because they said it, they gave it a famous, uh, 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 they gave it a fancy name, yeah. MMT. Now it's going to work. It ain't going to work, people. Yeah. It is not going to work. I mean, our uh, uh, fearless uh, president, uh, Joe Biden, um, as if the one point, what was it, nine mi uh, trillion. Tri trillion with a T. Yeah, remember when we used to only spend billions? You know, that was good old days. I remember when the debt hit a trillion and people freaked out. Now we got we got spending plans in the trillions. Well, he's got to, he wants to spend another two or three trillion with a T. You can't make this stuff up. It's as if these people are on purpose trying to crash this country. I can't explain it any other way. But there's not a thing I can do to influence it. How about you? Nope. nope. Another area of concern is revaluation of debt. I've heard so many people cheer inflation. Mm -hmm. All right, They cheer this. I got this house, and this house is at 2.13%. Uh, and hyperinflation is great. Uh, you know, it's. I got a it, fixed rate mortgage. I got a fixed rate mortgage. I'm going to win. No, you're not going to win. In hyperinflation, when the value becomes significantly decreased, again, you think the banks are going to lose? No, they're not going to lose. They'll get casino. They always win. They always That's win. why they're there. They're going to revalue the uh, currency. They've done this before. Oh, they're going to revalue your debts. I'm sorry. They're going to revalue your debts. Yeah. You thought you, you owed 30 grand on your car? Nope. Now you owe 100. And the money you had in the bank is still the same. The paycheck you got is still the same. And you're paying $20 a 
uh, you know, for a loaf of bread or a gallon of milk. Um, and yeah, now you you owe a lot more in your vehicle, right? So you got to get rid of debt. This credit card debt, especially credit card debt. I mean, you're just yeah. You know, um, but debt debt is like slavery. Yeah, but slavery to the banks. Yeah, because that's that's just money. That's cash flow, right? Going out to somebody else. But also, you think about vehicles is an integral part of being prepared, right? And so there's that's a whole other subject people get into. Um, you don't own your vehicle if you owe money on it. Okay, and think about like the Great Depression. Did the banks come and get their stuff? Yes, they absolutely did. People talk about that, right? The bank took our home. And so, how many banks? Uh, how many homes got foreclosed on during uh, was that two thousand eight? Oh no, oh, well, yeah, it was insane. Oh my gosh, the banks took all the. Hey, yeah. I remember they were building up entire neighborhoods, and the the housing market collapsed. We just had to remember half our neighborhood with new houses empty. Right. Um. So you think about that. You know, the quicker you can pay that off, um, the better. Um, you know, and so that's that, talking about my previous discussion about why I bought the foreigner and all that because, yeah, that is a new loan, right? Part of that is long term, I want a vehicle that I can maintain because the goal, too, is when you pay off the vehicle, now you got to maintain it forever. Um, I mean, that's a whole other discussion um, strategy, but yeah, and, and pay Dave, off your Dave debt. Ramsey covers managing yeah. that quite well. You know, so my wife and I, right now, we think one of our vehicles we can get paid off in July. Guess what? We're keeping that vehicle, we're not getting a new vehicle for you know, that vehicle is not getting replaced. Um, because again, once it's paid off, it's ours, and that money goes towards paying off other debt. But yeah, having that financial freedom, um, think about it. Think about it. if inflation happens and you have no debt, so you, you can even go as far as not having a mortgage. Um, it's just a lot easier to navigate, you know, so that's very important. So don't just, you know, max out your credit card. Um, let me go to Costco and spend ten thousand dollars on food. Yeah, I got food for 10 years. But then you lose your house. Yeah, now you got and, debt. Yeah. You're, you know, and you're paying at twenty five percent on your on your credit card. They yeah, don't do that. It's so, coming. Yeah. So what do we do? Yeah, prepare yourself. So the, the, the big the big push is self sufficiency. You know? You've got to be as self sufficient as possible. Get out of debt. You've got to make sure you've got a good plan. This this is actually what we're all about is helping you come up with a plan so that you can effectively and efficiently um, just improve your level of preparedness. And uh, the more efficient you are, the more stuff you'll get with your resources, the more efficient you are, the more skills you'll be able to acquire within a certain time frame, and the more efficient you are, the more knowledge that you'll be able to enhance your overall understanding with. Efficiency planning is very key. So. Um, I guess one way of saying it is sound planning is the essence of effective preparation. Yeah, if you don't have sound planning, uh, you're just wasting your time. You're, uh, you're going to do some things right, but it's going to be by accident. Yeah. So, yeah, check out some of our other videos. Uh, we've got some great tools. We're going to have some other ones coming up. Uh, but this hyperinflation, what, is it, what does it mean to us? Well, and let's, let's even... Like we mentioned before, we're already seeing at some level of inflation. And, and remember, too, this is not everyone talks about, well, when SHGF happens, and people generally refer to it as like an event, right? Everyone thinks EMP. But right now, the EMP is the, the big thing, right? So it's more it's more probable it's going to be gradual, right? So you guys think about, and as far as predicting stuff, if you guys ever remember you know, high school math, an exponential function, right? It's very very slow and then once it reaches a certain point the the it, it skyrockets right um and this was the whole deal with COVID, right remember the first few months of COVID. oh there's only so many it's you know we're only getting a thousand new a day and then at some point boom it explodes right for people who weren't paying attention it was a surprise to them um and so that's the thing just to understand assessing this threat this is going to progress faster than I expected. Even if I expect it to be faster than I expected, it's still going to be faster. If that made any sense to you? It's going to be like a snowball for you yeah. guys up north. You make a little <laughs> snowball and you got to push it and push it and push it. And you push it down the hill, it might even get stuck. And you have to push it downhill a little bit. But at some point, it gains enough weight. Its own mass is unstoppable. Yeah. And its own mass picks up its own speed as, as it gets bigger and bigger. That's what it's going to be like. Yeah, and the whole point of me saying that is you got to start preparing for that way before it seems obvious that you need to. Once it's obvious, first, once it's obvious to you, it's obvious to everybody. But generally, it's, it's 
it's never too late, right? But um, you kind of you miss the mark if you wait till it's really obvious. So, so a couple of things that I want to make sure that we that we cover that we have already seen. See, one of the things we look at the past and that will uh, teach us how things are likely to go in the future. So, hyperinflation, um, and and a, a sister to that is economic collapse, and. At some point, I mean, we, we see countries where you've got money, but your money's worthless. Zimbabwe. Oh, my gosh. You could be a millionaire and still can't buy a piece of bread because they got so many zeros on the, on the currency. Um, and then they just reissue new currency, drop a bunch of zeros. Uh, the German Republic before Hitler. Uh, they take a whole wheelbarrow of bread. People get paid midday so they can go buy a loaf of bread. Uh, it was just insane. It was crazy. And uh, that's where we're headed. But the other thing is you'll see um, it happened in Greece just a few years ago when things started to get a little uh, crazy. They got, just shut the banks down. Mm-hmm. Bank holiday. No banks, no ATMs, no credit cards, no access to your money. Okay? No access to your money. Or in Crete. And for those of you guys who may have overlooked this, this is going to come as a surprise to you because... This has been a theory for a little while, and Crete was the first country that tried this. And now you even have the U.S. and other European countries saying, we need to do this. And what that was was the basic concept that the banks, uh, your deposit in the banks, belonged to the bank. And what they did in Crete was they took the deposits of the money and gave them shares, okay, from a bank, if I have deposits in ABC Bank and the bank is failing, they take my money, give me shares to a failing bank, mm-hmm. now I'm part owner, and they take my money and give it to other uh, debtors. Oh my gosh, that's not fair. It happened in Crete, and they were just talking earlier this year about what a great plan that is for uh, fiscal, fiscal stability for the banking system. Notice how they're always taking care of the banks. The, for the banking system in the U.S., in Germany, in England, in these other countries. Oh, yeah. Well, there's been talk about it's season happened. 401ks and all that kind of stuff. You know? yeah. So the season of the 401ks, um, that has been talked about um, under uh, two presidents ago, mm-hmm. President Obama, and just swapping that out with increased Social Security credits. So my point is that as part of our preps, Everything can't be in the banks. Everything can't be electronic. You should have something tangible that you can hold in your hand that you can spend. Whether it's cash in your house, silver, gold, a combination of those, you should have some portion of your money available to you. And this should. And I, I'm one of these guys. I don't like to put all my eggs in one basket. Yeah. Have cash at home, yep. and have gold and have silver. Yep. If you have hyperinflation, the gold will help protect you from that. If they just shut down everything, see, it's a different a, a different event, but they shut down everything. Everyone's crying, oh, my gosh. And you've got cash, and you can go to the market, and you can take care of your family. You can take care of your kids Yeah, because you got cash. And one thing to remember, too, is you've got to keep an open mind as far as how you think things may develop. So real common you'll hear people say, well, if X, Y, if this happens... Buy silver. Um, you know, people are starving. It's worthless. You can't eat it, and, and I, they're they're only gonna either stock up on on food or bullets or whatever. And I'm like, listen, the whole totality of human history, silver has maintained value. Gold and silver, right? You think magically now it's gonna be worthless? No. Okay. Um, now I understand their point is if yeah, if you're starving to death, you want food. Okay, but they are laser focused on this one very particular scenario, I'm like. Chances are, total collapse where everyone just suddenly has nothing is not how things well, are going to happen. But, but even if you get to that initial point where no one cares about the silver initial for a short mm-hmm. time, um, yeah, they are so focused. And one of the things we talk about regular is to be balanced. Yep. There's nothing wrong with having silver and food. Oh, yeah. yeah this both. is not an either or. And bullets. Yep. And bandages. Yep. Yeah, because and after the initial shots. Yeah, things will recover. There'll be some some sort of economy you always recovers, a local economy. And you know what? If nothing ever happens and you get old, the silver is gonna maintain its value, you know. 
um, I don't view it as an investment. I view it more of as insurance. You know? um, yeah. So my silver and my gold. Uh, actually, I've got it for two different reasons. I've got the gold as a hedge against hyperinflation. Um, the silver is more for SHTF. Yeah. It's obviously smaller denominations. I mean, I'm not going to walk out and buy food with a, a Karugarand or anything. I don't know if I'll be that hungry. That's worth quite a bit. But uh, some silver, junk silver, and silver bars, and, and all that silver rounds. Um, that's something that you could use in, in commerce. Somebody's going to want it. So, I agree with you. Yeah, so pay attention to your finances. Watch your money. Um, that's really, I think, where the biggest threat is coming, uh, is coming out. So, whether it is hyperinflation, that's why we have the gold. Whether it's banks shutting down like they did in Creek, keep some cash uh, on hand. So you're protecting against these different type of threats that we've seen happen already. We're not talking some fancy. So here's the thing with the with EMP. I, I'm not dismissing the EMP. Um, but the EMP threat has not happened before. It's a new threat, so people are concerned because it's the big mystery. Okay, That doesn't mean it's not a threat. But these other things, especially on the financial, they have all happened before somewhere. So we can learn from those. So we should be better prepared. We should have a better understanding of how these things develop because uh, they've happened. Yeah. Yeah. And if you start looking, uh, more and more mainstream financial experts are saying, hey, this is probably going to happen. You know, it used to be like, 10 years ago, people yeah. were still talking about this, and it was kind of a. It wasn't a real mainstream idea, but um, yeah, now more and more of them are saying that you should probably expect this to happen. Yeah, so let's wrap up. Key takeaways. Watch your money. Well, yeah, watch your money. Take a second look at how you have your money uh, dispersed. Make sure that you uh, address hyperinflation. Make sure you address bank shutdowns. These things are real threats. Make sure that you have a plan um, in place and uh, that you've taken action to do that. Make a move to be more self-reliant. That's got to be your goal. Self-reliant. Grow your own food. Get out of the suburbs. Get out of the urban area. Yeah, because reality is you can only store so much food. Right? So people yeah. love videotaping their stores. You really got to be sustainable and self-reliant. Right. Civil unrest. Um, I don't think it's going away. But that's just the stand to. Something happened before we get the facts. People are in the street. And you don't want to be that person. You know, you don't yeah. want you, you don't want your wife, I don't want your mother, my wife. So, you know, have plans, have, have uh, different paths. Yeah. That we practice this. Yeah, yeah and, and of course, there'll be more videos that are more. Each of these things, each of these concepts, you could dive into and expand even more, as we will at some point. But um, yeah, this needs to be on your radar. You start planning how am I going to handle this issue? You know? Yeah, I mean, the time is short. I, I really believe that our time for preparation is diminishing somewhat rapidly. Now, I know, here's the thing. People have been saying this my whole life. <laughs> right? like to do. Oh, any, any day, it's, it's going to happen. And they've been wrong. And you know what's going to happen? Those people that have been saying this for 50 years, when things collapse, they're going to say, See, I told you. I told you. I, I heard that so much with COVID. The people that have been wrong 80 times. Oh, yeah. Now yeah, they're right. A broken a broken yeah. clock is right twice a day, right? Um, so I'm not trying to scare anybody, but I'm the guy on the other hand, like I, I mentioned, um, with Y2K. And people are panicking. I'm saying, uh, no, guys, this is not a time for panic. Yeah. Let's not panic. And, again, I called it uh, correctly. Yeah. Uh, at COVID, remember they laughed at us. We said, "Guys, uh, this is going to let loose." Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like the flu. And even with that, you had a few people that were acting like this was going to be the next plague that wipes everyone out. And I was, we were in the middle, of like, "Hold on, yeah, it's, it's not, not that. It's not. It's not nothing. We don't know. It's not the flu. Yeah, you know, and it's and it's, uh, and it's not the bubonic plague yeah, either. No, it clearly wasn't that. You know, yes. it, it's not as bad as we thought it was going to be. But we even it was never going to be right. the bubonic plague. Um, but, yeah, you know, that's one thing to understand about these type of things. The rate of acceleration increases. 
okay? Just like that, that exponential function I was telling you about. So the next five years are gonna progress a lot faster than the last five years. Yeah, so, so take care of your plan. Make sure you have a plan. Look at what you can accelerate. It's time to, to be more narrowly focused on our plan. And I always say, take care of life. Make sure you live life. And yes, don't stop doing that. But as far as where prepping is in the overall life, um, I think we need to give it more attention um, as people who care about ourselves, care about our families, care about being ready for the next thing. So thanks for watching. We covered a lot of stuff. Uh, I hope we didn't scare you, but I hope we gave you something to think about. So um, again, um, click the like button, click the subscribe, share this with a friend. And uh, stay safe and stay prepared.